so we will discuss certain linux concepts as well as linux commands so let's see just these two terms kernel and shell kernel is the core operating system that is the one who which manages the hardware which allocates cpu which allocates memory and shell is kind of a circle lying between the kernel and the applications so if you want to visualize the shell you can understand the process which is giving this prompt right now the prompt is home vikas it could have been dollar also so that process is the shell there is a command called ps ps means process status show me the processes this bash is the shell for me there are different shells people use we have corn shell we have c shell we have bash okay bash possibly is the most friendly one because in bash you can do up arrow key to navigate to the previous commands up arrow and down arrow you can navigate and you can do something like this you want to print a file you can say cat d and press tab it will automatically expand so auto completion and up arrow down arrow makes it a favorite so clear basically means clear the screen and we will see some basic commands and concepts linux is a authenticated system every user has a username and password he or she has to log in using that username and password there is a special user called root and root is a all powerful kind of user root basically has access to all the files and otherwise you may have users like vikas ram mohan and each of the users will have their own home directory and they will work in their home directories but root is like all powerful it can access files of any user and it can kill any processes it can do anything otherwise normally vikas cannot access files of ram unless ram specifically gives permissions to group or others we will see what this user group and others are but understand that there are users each user has his or her own area home home directory they can create files there and they are not supposed to interfere with other users unless they grant permissions there is a concept of permissions how the file system looks like so file system looks like a tree the root of the tree is a directory called slash and then there are further subdirectories one most prominent subdirectory is home every user has to be given his own folder or directory so home will have area for every user let's say vikas ram and so on and then there are other directories like bin library user etc some configuration and standard executables and libraries they are in th those areas so let's see it as an example let's say who is this user there is a command who am i so i can say id id means show me what are my ids so my user id is 1000 my group id is again 1000 and i am belonging to these groups so there is a concept of groups for example you may say that all the users belonging to the finance groups they have access to some specific folder and all the people in the it group they have access to some other folder so there is a concept of groupings using group id otherwise every user has a id uid and the root has a special uid zero so if i am vikas then my home directory is slash home slash vikas i will go to a empty directory i just created this training directory if i do ls ls means show me the listing of contents of the directory training currently there is nothing so i can create directory i can say create dir1 and now i have dir1 if i want to create a text file there are different ways i can use vi i can say vi a.c and i can type some code let me save it i have created a normal file so you can see that it is colored differently if you do ls minus l it means show a long listing for every file or directory it shows more data what was the last modification timestamp who is the owner of this file every file has an owner what is the group of this file and what are the permissions of this file we will see more of these permissions there are nine bits rwx repeated three times the first character shows the type of the file so it is d for directory hyphen for regular file or normal file 
and then for devices so you may find c or b those are like device files in linux almost everything is represented as a file devices included we have a.c and we have created a directory there are more ways of creating a file you can create a simple file using echo command so you can say echo hello world it just prints on the screen hello world you can redirect the output into a file let's say x1 so i am saying run this command but redirect the output into a file called x1 unix is like no news is good news if the command doesn't give an error you can presume that it has succeeded so if i see the contents of x1 cat is a command to print the content of a file or even multiple files on the standard output the screen so it has been created so you can create simple files using such command now i can try some basic commands maybe i want to copy a.c to b.c cp means copy and it has been copied maybe i want to rename a.c to xyz.c the command is mv basically means move a.c is now no more there but xyz.c is existing i can say remove b.c rm when i say move mv xyz.c i can move things into a directory also i can say move xyz.c into dir1 if the right hand side is a directory basically it means that move this file into the directory so now if i see the content of dir1 if i say ls this directory it shows the content of that directory so in that directory dir1 i have xyz.c and now let's say i want to rename xyz.c i can do two things i can either do cd dir1 and rename xyz.c to abc.c or sitting in this directory training itself i can say mv dir1 slash xyz.c to dir1 only abc.c so basically what i'm saying is that wherever you can give a file name you can give a path also path is basically sequence of directories terminated by normally a file name but it could be a directory at the end also separated by slash that means if i am sitting in this directory i can manipulate files lying in other directories by giving a path and i can see that it's working and i can give a absolute path also i can give a complete path let's say i want to move this file which is inside dir1 to the current directory so i can say rrr.c so i can move that and now i see that rrr.c has been existing here and dir1 is empty such paths are called absolute paths because you have started with slash and you have given the complete path so they are absolute because they don't depend on the current position but if you use path like dir1/abc.c it is dependent on where you are currently so that's a relative path so that is the concept of relative and absolute path and there are two special symbols dot and dot dot so if i want to go to the parent directory i can say cd dot 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 means parent directory so cd dot dot will take me to vikas if i do cd hyphen i come back from wherever i came i go to that place i can even say cd dot dot slash dot dot that means i want to go to the parent of parent so i go there and i can come back i can say dot dot slash python go to the parent and then one level down to python i can go there if you do cd dot dot means this directory you normally don't use such commands like cd dot because that doesn't do anything but sometimes when you are running executable sometimes you specify like this dot slash a dot out so we will see what the reason is it has to do with a path environment variable and whether the path environment variable has the dot or not in any directory if you do ls minus a ls minus a means show the hidden files also so you will always find these two entries dot and dot dot so dot means current directory dot dot means parent directory you can remove a directory also you can remove it using rmdir but let's say you created a directory and then you created some file within that abcd a.c 
this touch command just creates an empty file. So now in ABCD, I have a file a.c now i cannot do rmda or abcd because it's not empty so you can use rm minus capital r option this capital r means remove that directory recursively that directory its children directories their children directories the entire tree rooted at abcd remove that's the command so you can do do like that there are many options of almost all the commands. The key to the treasure is man page. So if you do man ls, you will see that so many options are there. If you press space and you can navigate, so many options are there. Let's say you are wondering about that minus L, which I told. So you can search slash minus L. So minus L means use a long listing. Similarly, for other things, you can investigate. Let's say you are wor worried about rm and minus capital r just search and you know that it's recursive in fact it also tells you that you can use this notation also minus minus recursive or you can write minus capital r or you can write minus small r these are called options in unix commands have different options like these are the options basically you have a command name you have options and then you have some arguments on which to operate when I say ls minus l, that's an option. In fact, you can combine multiple options. You can say ls minus ltr, which is basically meaning that show me in time sorted order. You can use a shorthand. You can say ls minus ltr. Minus ltr means all of these are options. Minus l, minus t, minus r. You can investigate more commands, ls, cp, mv, rn. There are more options about it. There is a command pwd which shows the current working directory. Right now, I am seeing the current working directory anyway. But many times you have a prompt like this. You have some prompt like ps1 equal to dollar. Now, it's very easy to forget where am I. So, I can do point to working directory and I can know. So, how did I get that nice prompt? Uh, that is to do with a special variable ps1 environment variable. If I set it like this, dollar pwd greater than, then, then I get that nice one. So what I have done is I have simply added this command in my bash rc. What am I doing right now? Tilde slash dot bash rc. I am editing my bash rc. That's a hidden file. Any file starting with dot is a hidden file. Hidden in the sense if you do ls, you don't find it. If you do ls minus a, then you see it. And tilde means my home directory. So if I look at that file, I have added this. We have seen that files can be regular and directory. We could have text files and binary files. Let's just see what is a binary file. Let's just create a program. So now I have this rr.c and I can compile it. I can say gcc rrr.c. A dot out has been created. I can run it. If I run like a dot out, I fail. This has to do with a path variable not having the dot in its list. So I, I can do dot slash a dot out, then it will run and it prints a hello world. This a dot out, if I see, uh, that's a binary file. If I do vi a dot out, it's a binary file. The contents are binary. While rrr.c is a text file, I can print it. It's S key characters only. And a dot out is an executable file. So if you look at permissions, you will see that a dot out has this execute permission. While rr dot c, there is no sense of executing it. So it doesn't have it. For directory also, execute permission has a special meaning that whether you can cd into that directory or not. We will see permissions in more detail. But broadly, this is like user bits, read, write, executable, group bits, the group of the file and others, user group others. Primarily, these three divisions are there. We have seen absolute and relative path. Touch is a nice utility to create files. You can do multiple things in one go. You can say touch A, B, C, D. So in one command, you are creating four files. Or you can say mkdir d1, d2, d3. And you have created three directories in one command. The commands are powerful. When you are printing things, cat rrr.c, you can print multiple files also. You can say cat rrr.c and x1. So it prints both their contents. 
there are environment variables for example if you print the value of home environment variable that is my home directory if you want to know what is the path path basically is an environment variable which indicates that when i run any command where do i look for that executable for example when i run ls there is an executable called ls lying somewhere so it is looked first in this directory then in this directory and so on